Praise Jesus, child of God, shalom, shalom, and in Sally G, this is Lesson Today. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in for us lesson today. I know and I do believe that each and every one of us are going to be blessed by us lesson today. And that the word of the Lord is always there for us in that it remains to be uh, the word of the Lord in that uh, Paul writes to Timothy telling Timothy, always be ready to preach the word in season and out of season. Always be ready to preach the word in season and out of season. And so just before I I did this video, just uh, thinking about the way sometimes we live a life of uh, of not being offended by the evil that's around us in that we ought to be people who are like in that we should not like allow evil to be around us we should not be found living a life of entertaining evil because whenever we live a life of entertaining evil whenever we live a life of allowing that which ain't of god to continue on being around them before you know it you shall also be corrupt before you know you shall also be corrupt because it's actually uh, because we live a life of always having that sinful nature in the book of isaiah in the book of isaiah says that uh, even though your sins are red as scarlet i'm gonna make them as white as snow even though your sin is as red as scarlet i'm gonna make it white as snow i'm gonna make it white as snow and so and so god what is god making white as snow god is making white as snow sin in that even though we are living in our sin in, even though we are living in our body which has a sinful nature in that we are at peace that's the, we, that's the thing about white color white usually talks about peace even though your sin is a red or scarlet red is usually a, a thing about danger is a thing about danger i think about death even though your sin is a red or scarlet i'm gonna make it white as snow and so uh, allow me to read for you that verse in case you have never uh, read it and so so that you can you can see of what i'm saying uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 he said that come let us join together says the Lord though your sins are as scarlet they shall be white as snow what what is God sorry what is God making white as snow God is making white as snow in that sin in that we are still in this sinful nature you see when you receive Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior your, your, your spirit man was your spirit man was born again and so now it, for each and every one of us we are living a life of having our mind transformed our mind our mind gets to be transformed that's our, our soul being that's our soul continually being saved continually being saved and then later on when our Lord Jesus Christ is gonna appear in his glory is gonna come back with power and glory in that I usually like that verse whenever I say that our Lord Jesus Christ is gonna come back with power and glory the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ is is uh, the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ is gonna come back with power and glory uh, is because is because that's how we shall know that it's him. That's how we shall know that it is it is him in that his glory. That's the same thing about Moses. When Moses was up in the mountain and dead, he spent like 80 days. Uh, at, at first, he spent 40 days, 40 nights without eating or drinking. And then later on, when he uh, when he drew down uh, the two tablets that had the Ten Commandments, he then later on went up the mountain, stayed there for 40 days, 40 nights. And so in total, that, those were those were 80 days that he stayed up. He stayed in the presence of the Lord. And so he came back and the glory of the Lord was upon him. That's, it, that's usually the beautiful thing about uh, us spending time in the Lord's presence in that God's glory gets to cover us. God's glory gets to cover us. And so, uh, and so as we, uh, and so as we, uh, and so our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back with glory and power. Our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back with glory and power. And so allow me also to read for you that verse uh, so that each and every one of us can be able. And so it's going to be a way that each and every one of us as believers, as Christians, we're gonna realize that it's our it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a uh, it's our Lord Jesus Christ who has come back. Uh, in the book of Matthew chapter twenty four verse thirty, Matthew twenty four thirty say that then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of earth will mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great great glory with power and great glory because he uh, because our lord jesus christ now he is in the presence of our father he's sitting at the right hand of our father and so he's gonna come back with power and great glory he's gonna come back with power and great glory and so that's a thing for also for each and every one of us you see as in if our lord jesus christ is gonna come back with power and great glory it means that for us who are here on earth we need to live a life of power we need to live a life of glory in that the bible talks about from glory to glory and so that's the kind of life that each and every one of us as believers as christians we ought to be uh, to be living here on, on this earth as we continue on awaiting the coming back of our lord just Christ. in that for each and every one of us we ought to live a life in power you ought to live a life in glory in that that's how we get that's how people shall get to know that we are, that we are the children of god and that's, that's how the um, people shall get to know that we are the children of god you see our lord just christ was listening to apostle joshua selman and then he's 
say that our Lord Jesus Christ in that he ascended and he ascended into heaven with the body. He ascended to heaven in the body so that when he shall be coming back, he shall not need to, uh, to go through the womb of a woman like the way he came out the first time. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ in that the man Jesus, the man Jesus. And the Bible talks about the man Jesus, the man Jesus who is in heaven. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get that verse easily for you. Uh, the man Jesus, uh, so that each and every one of us can be able to keep track. Man Jesus. And so that's why our Lord Jesus Christ in that has the body, uh, they are in heaven, so that uh, when he'll be coming back, Uh, sorry, I'm not able to track it fast. There are like 99 options given. Uh, but we all know that our Lord Jesus Christ, but we all know that our Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, in that he ascended with his body, he ascended with, with his body. And uh, the same body that the disciples got to touch, uh, like Thomas, the doubting Thomas, in that he said that unless I unless I place my hand, I unless I place my hand, unless I touch, unless I place my hand uh, in the in the in the in his hand where he was nailed and also at the side where he was pierced, in that unless I, I put my hands there, in that uh, in that I do not believe. And then later on our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him and then he uh, he told him put your hand um, put your uh, put your finger here and then put your hand up uh, at my side and then he got to see that truly he was the reason Christ truly he was the reason Christ and then Jesus Christ in that I bet he said for like 40 days uh, 40 days uh, here on earth after his resurrection from the dead he spent uh, he spent with a number of believers and the disciples uh, a number of times and then later on he ascended to heaven and then two angels uh, two angels were there when he was ascending to heaven and then uh, and then they asked the they asked the disciple in that in that why are you looking up why are you looking up? Uh, that in, is in the book of Acts. That is in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. I bet it's in chapter 1. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse... Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 10. He said that, And while they were gazing into the into the heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robe, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come back, will come in the same way, as you saw him go into heaven and so our lord Jesus Christ is going to come back the way the same way that uh the disciple got to witness him going up to heaven let us pray Almighty and never leave Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm grateful yet. Another opportunity and a privilege are given unto me to share a word. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that you believe, O oh God, that your God who has a word for each and every one of us, O oh God. Let your word be broken in, the, in, in various ways, O oh God, that, that, that's going to be relevant to each and every one of us, O oh God. And dear Heavenly Father, let us be found hearing your voice, O oh God, for in, in your word you say that your sheep knows your voice, O oh God. And dear Heavenly Father, since we know your voice, O oh God, and every and every one of us, O oh God, to follow your voice, O oh God, none of us is going to be misled, O oh God. None of us is going to be led astray, O oh God. None of us is gonna be deceived, oh God, because we know of your voice, oh God. And dearly Father, when we hear the voice of the stranger, the voice of the enemy, oh God, dearly Father, enable each and every one of us, oh God, to flee, to flee, to flee. And dearly Father, enable each and every one of us to live a life of submitting unto you, resisting the devil, so that we shall see him, oh God, fleeing away from us, fleeing away from us, from us, oh God. And today, as I'm gonna share about altar in our dwelling, altar in our dwelling, is my prayer, my heart is that for each and every one of us, oh God, that your God is gonna speak to each and every one of us, oh God. And dearly Father, enable each and every one of us, oh God, to live uh, to live a life, oh God, of having your Altar, oh dearly Father, in our dwelling, oh God, for your glory and honor of your name. Dearly Father, let your word be seeds in our hearts and be fruits in our life. And this is a prayer of faith that we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. And so today, uh, in that in this month, we're doing a series about um, light in my dwelling, light in my dwelling. And so today, I'm gonna be found sharing about altar in my dwelling, altar in my dwelling. The beautiful thing about an altar, an altar usually allows the authorization. An altar usually allows the authorization. Uh, from the spiritual realm to the physical realm in that there is usually through an altar is usually through an altar and so for each and every one of us if we desire to experience the uh, the intervention of heaven the intervention of heaven here on earth if you want if you if we want to live a life of seeing heaven colliding with earth uh, heaven colliding with earth then we need to be found uh, living a life of having altars then we need to be found living a life of having altars having altars in our homes having altars in our businesses having altars, altars in our estate having altars everywhere so that we shall only be found seeing heaven evading up. Whenever heaven evades up, then the impossible things shall be found happening right before our very eyes. Then the impossible things shall be found happening right before our very eyes. So an altar is usually allows that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, intervention that. Uh, that colliding of heaven, that colliding of heaven and earth. And yesterday, yesterday we had uh, my friend, my 
and my a friend to my dad is called Reverend Macharia, and then he was speaking to us, and then he was telling us that prayer, prayer is a spiritual transaction with God. Prayer is a spiritual transaction with God, and we all know about a transaction in that you can go to the marketplace and then you want to buy a particular commodity, and then you're like, that price is too high, I lower it for me, then I'm gonna buy like ten, I'm gonna buy like a dozen of all those things. In that, that's the same thing that happens to us each and every time that we live a life of prayer, and that prayer is really a spiritual transaction that that, that happens that happens whenever believers engage in prayer, whenever believers engage in prayer. And so, as I've told you that today, I'm going to be sharing about an altar in my dwelling, an altar in my dwelling. You see, there's nothing as good as as, as you always knowing, know, uh, of you always knowing that there's a place that you meet with God. There's nothing as good as you and in your home place knowing that there's a, there's a special place that there's a special place that usually uh, that usually meet with God. That usually like usually pray and outpour your heart unto God and outpour your heart unto God. And so we are going to be reading uh, from the Old Testament, from the Old Testament about the tent of meeting, the tent of meeting. And I know and I do believe that each and every one of us, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed in that. That's what we are lacking. Today. Uh, you see in many homes, in many homes, uh, in, in many homes, in that, in many homes, according to the design of whatever, of, of your home, in that, it's usually that central place, it's usually that central place central place in that someone in their home they can be having their sofa set in a particular arrangement they can be having the the wall unit in a particular corner they can be having the uh, the water uh, dispenser in a particular area and and you see as in all of these things all of these things in our home in that you shall get to realize um you shall get to realize that there's a place that each and every one of you there's a place that each and every one of you while you're staying in home or, or, or in full house where uh, everyone of the family is there in that is that central place that each and every one of us fix your eyes in that is that central place, like uh, this, that central place, like for instance, uh, maybe you are watching to um, you are watching this uh, this sermon, and then everyone else who's there with you, in that they can also watch it together with you. They can also watch it together with you, and you see that's that's like a central place. And since so my prayer, my heart is uh, wherever the, a central place is in your family, in that have an altar for God there, have an altar for God there, have an altar for God there. In that in many homes, that central place, that place where everyone can look at is their television, and so and so in a television. Yeah, in the television, and there are things that um, when someone comes into your home, in that can they re realize of the God whom you serve? Can they realize of the God whom you serve? You see, we ought to live a life of not being ashamed of the gospel. We ought to live, uh, to live a life of not being ashamed that we are born again, that we are believers, that we are Christian, in that we ought to make everyone who comes into our lives, who come into our home, in that to get to know about it. No one ever lights a lamp and put it on a bowl, and that everyone should, uh, who lights up a lamp usually puts it on a bowl so that everyone shall be found walking into the room, they shall see the light, they shall see the lamp. Uh, the same to each and every one of us in that when you're inviting your friends to come to your home place, when you're inviting your relative to come and visit you, or uh, when you're inviting anyone to come and visit you, and then they're all seated in that, what do they for what, what do they see? What do they see? Uh, do they see of how of how uh, they, do they see that you are someone who uh, desires more of God? Do they see that you are someone who uh, who lives a life or uh, who lives a life adoring God, who lives a life in fear of God, or will they sit and then they are seeing all, all the things of the world, all the things of the world in that all the funny posters, all the funny stickers, all the funny funny chats or the all the funny uh, funny uh, pictures and everything or will they be seeing of how of how you are maybe you're having like uh, a bible there in that as they are sitting wherever they're sitting in that and then they're looking at at whatever everyone else uh, everyone else is looking at uh, do they see their bible do they see your bible uh, do they see of how much you're having the hymn books do they, do they see of how of how you every time is just you in uh, you with god you with god and then maybe you're having uh, you're, you're having your uh, your cds and then each and every one of them is maybe of don moen uh, Don Moen, like uh, Brit Nicole, uh, all of the gospel musicians in the, that central place, that central place. And so that's what I'm gonna, and that's why I'm encouraging even one of, of us as I'm sharing uh, about altar in my dwelling, altar in my dwelling, in that another that central place, in that when someone shall be found like visiting you, in that what do they, what, what, what can they, what can they uh, like uh, conclude about your life, what can they conclude about your relationship with God? In that is yours hidden or, or, or is yours um, one which is open for everyone to see, for everyone to know, in that everyone when they're walking into your home. And so that may, that can make other people to like uh, rearrange how they are having their homes. Um, and so well and good. That's usually the beautiful thing about having the word of the Lord. In that is usually we, um, we, we, are, we are meant to live a life of not only be hearers of the word, but also dwellers of the word. And so in the book of Exodus, in the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 7, in the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 7, uh, it says what? Exodus 33 7. Uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 7 he said that at uh, the tent of meeting now Moses used to take 
the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the camp, other people would rise, and each would stand at, at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. And so here we are seeing during the time of, of the Israelites, while they were in their pilgrim uh, through the wilderness, in that they used um, in that in, in that in that where the tent of me, where the tent of meeting was placed was in a place that each and every Israelite, when they Moses was going into the temple, in that they could stand at the at the door of the tent and they could see Moses. And so we are seeing that it was a place in that the Israelites, in that they lived a life of always having the tent of meeting, uh, uh, the tent of meeting in a place that each and every one of them could see, each and every one of them could see. Uh, you see, as in that, uh, you see, as in the beautiful thing about literature and is that little children actually observer and that a little child a, a little child by the way a parent uh, does uh, his or her thing in that a little child shall always get to know of, of that which the parent treasures of that which the parent doesn't treasure you see whenever a child is in their home and then he's seeing of how about the parent uh, is putting uh, is putting things of god things of god i remember when i was in primary school together with my brother in the, the, the time that uh, my biological dad took uh, took us away from my mom and then later on when we went back to a mom in that our television was written family tv and news only family tv and news only only and so we were like yeah this is interesting and so and so that to us as little children was like my mom want us to, le- or to only listen to family tv in the things that are gonna build up uh, build us up spiritually things are gonna uh, they're, they're gonna mold us things are gonna uh, the, the, these things that are gonna inspire us and also the news i don't know how a uh, news was relevant to us but family tv in that they they, uh, they used to bring the kids show each and every saturday in that it was fun uh, later on <laughs> Uh, KTN in that they used to have a uh, different um uh, the different cartoon program coming during the weekend and our uh, childhood memories are usually at the, the uh, in the childhood days were the best for me and I know also for me most of us in that we had the best uh, during our childhood days and so my part my mom in that in our television she just uh, put a sticker uh, with a white tape uh, with a white tape uh, masking tape yeah I bet that's the name of that tape and then she wrote their family TV and news only family TV and news only. Uh, because she wanted us to live a life of being God fearing, and so that is the same thing about the tent of meeting. It was uh, in a place that everyone uh, could see what was going on, and everyone who wanted to so, uh, to sort the Lord, in that they went there, they went there, in that in our home, in our home, uh, in that in our home, we actually sit in a way that each and every time that we in the evening usually having family devotion, and during the family devotion, in that someone usually standing right before the television, in that for us we have raised an altar there, for us we have raised an altar there. And the beautiful thing about raising an altar is that we cannot be found like um, maybe. Maybe sometimes, maybe at the things of the world like masturbation pornography. Uh, watching such programs in that it will not be in your mind because you'll be like no way i cannot be doing I, I cannot be doing this because we have raised an altar for god there in that someone will maybe want to go and hide in, a, in, a, in a, another place but but uh, that's the, that's actually the powerful thing about raising an altar the powerful thing about raising an altar is that you shall always remember in that to offer yourself a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god for that a spiritual act of worship short worship that is in the book of uh, romans chapter uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 he said that there is no there is therefore no condemnation for those of whom are in Christ Jesus and uh, this verse doesn't have all of it uh, in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1 he said that I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your body a living sacrifice to, pre- to present your body a living sacrifice you see uh, if I'm gonna live a life of being a living sacrifice then I need an altar I need an altar where I'm gonna lay my my body lay my body as a living sacrifice on the altar and that's why today we're going uh, today I'm sharing about um, and that's why today I'm sharing about uh, about an altar in my dwelling an altar in my dwelling in that each and every one of us we need an altar in our dwelling in the raise an altar in your place of work raise an altar in your prayer in your in your place of work raise an altar in your family raise an altar in every in every place in every place that you have that usually go there over and over again in that raise an altar for instance when you raise an altar in your place of work you shall not be found doing something like bribing or lying to your boss because you'll be like here i've raised an altar here i've raised an altar and then it starts off by fire and then fragrance and then and then uh, and then fire fragrance and then praise worship I forgot it. It's uh, it's it's by a uh, it's a song by Lucine, and I know and I and I know most of you know of, of it. And so and so it's for you. It's for each and every one of us to live a life of knowing that God provides the fire. And since God provides the fire, we are the people who should only be found uh, presenting the sacrifice. Uh, in the book of in the book of Numbers chapter two, in the book of Numbers chapter two, my brother has shared about it. Uh, I was even consulting him about this. In the book of Numbers chapter two, the arrangement of the camp. 
the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, The people of Israel shall camp each, uh, each by his own standard, with the banners of their father houses. They shall come facing the tent of meeting on every side. They shall come facing the tent of meeting on every side. They shall come facing the tent of meeting on every side. And so we can see uh, in that, I bet, in that, for me, Karema Kikonzi Kalete Kalosi, I can take and take it in that, uh, in that, yeah, I remember what a particular documentary uh, that was showing of how the Israelites used to come. The Israelites used to come. Uh, it was like the cross. It was like the cross. In that, I, um, in that, I'm gonna hopefully as I read this, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get its numbers right. For now, I'm not seeing it, but I bet it was like the cross. In that, maybe they're like. Three, I don't know if it was like three, three, and then two. Um, and then four like the cross something of the sort but anyway let's continue and then at the center it was the tent of meeting uh, anyway uh, I've, I've had it somewhere and so first of all don't quote you on it in that I'm trying to remember it the people of Israel shall come each of uh, each each by his own standard they shall come facing the tent of meeting on every side and so the tent of meeting like every other thing in that it had it had it had, uh, it had four sides in that length width yeah and the height and then it had four sides and so and so the Israelites were to camp in a in a way that there are those of whom are this side this side this side this side i hope that you're getting the picture uh verse three those who camp on the east um towards the sunrise shall be of the center of the camp of judah by their companies the chief of the of, of people of judah being nah nahashon the son of aminad his company has listed being sent as 74,600. Those come next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar, the chief of the chief of the people of Issachar being Nathanael, the son of Zuar. His company has listed being 54, uh, 54,400. Then the tribe of Zeb, Zebulam, the chief of the people of Zebulam being Eliab, son of Helon. His company is listed being 57,400. All those listed uh, of the camp of Judah by their companies were uh, 186,400. And 400. Uh, they were set out first on the march. On the south, so you have seen there, on the east, uh, there were three. On the south, of, be the standard, uh, on the south be the standard of the camp of Reuben by their companies, the chief of the people, Reuben being Eluz, Eluza. The son of Shedua, his company has listed being forty-six thousand five hundred. All those, all those to the camp next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon. Simeon, the chief of the people of Simeon, being Shalome, the son of Zerushaddai, his company is listed being fifty-seven, at fifty-nine thousand three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, the chief of the people of Gad, being El Elishaf, the son of Reul, his company has listed being. 45,650. All those listed um, camp of Reuben, uh, their companies were 50, 50, 151,450. 40, so uh, they, they were the second, they set out second. So you see, east, three, south, three. Let's continue. Then the camp of meeting shall set out with the camp of the Levites in the base of the camp as they, as they come. So they set out each in position standard standard by standard on the west shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim by their company the chief of people of Ephraim are being Elishama the son of Emhud his company has listed being 40,500 the next to him shall be the tribe of Manasseh the chief of people of Manasseh are being Galiel the son of Peduza, his company has listed at 2,200. The tribe of Benjamin, the chief of the people of Benjamin being Abidan, the son of Gideon, his company has listed that 5,400. All those listed of the camp uh, Ephraim by his company uh, were, were 108,000 and 100 they shall set on the third march so we are seeing east southwest there are three 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 so that's nine remainder with three so it was oh perfect square Amen. 
on the on the north shall be the shall be the standard of the people of Dan by their companies. The chief of the people of Dan being Eliza, son of Amishadai, his company as listed being two thousand and seven hundred. And those to the camp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher, uh, the chief of the people of Asher being Pagiel, the son of Ocharan, his company as listed for one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, uh, the chief of the people of Naphtali, uh, being Akira, uh, son of Enan, his company as listed. 50, 53,400. All those listed of the camp of Dan were uh, 157,600. They were set on, on the last standard by standard. Uh, these are the people of Israel as listed by the family houses. All those listed in the camp by their companies were 50, uh, what? Five, uh, 603 and 550. 603,550. But the Levites were not listed among the people of Israel as the law commanded Moses. So, so north, um, so it's an east three, south three, west three, north three, twelve. I bet there's a trip they repeated it. Anyway, uh, the thing is that uh, the thing about it is all about. Um, 20 in my dwelling in that the central place, 20 in my dwelling in the central place, in that one time round when David was living in his palace and then he looked at the Ark of Covenant, which is when the presence of the Lord uh, was in a tent. And then he was like, how can I live in such a big place and, and there's no place for for the uh, for God's tent and there's no place for, for the Ark of Covenant, which is the presence of the Lord. And so that's why he said that I'm going to build for the Lord a house. And then the Lord appeared to him, telling him, uh, the Lord, I bet sent Nathaniel uh, to David, telling David that, I've remembered of things. <laughs> yeah, so Nathaniel, so Nathaniel, so Nathaniel was sent to David. Tell David that he was not the one who was going to build it, but it was his son who was going to build it. Because he has shed too much blood. I'm going to check on it in that. Yeah, so I hope that each and every one of us has been blessed by our today's sharing. I hope and I do believe sharing all of us are gonna be have been blessed by today's sharing. In that the tent of uh, in that tent in that I'll change my dwelling, I'll change my dwelling so that each and every one of us can live a life of offering our ourselves a living sacrifice holy and simple unto God, so that each and every one of us can always focus on that which is important to us, and that is us are uh, giving our all to God in, and then having nothing take the place of God in our lives. Let him be your gaze, let him be your focus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ with the outer and perfect of our fear. In that having your home, having your house in such a way that each and every time maybe you're feeling down, you're feeling sky, then you're just looking up at the place where it's the center, then you're like, you're, you're just, your spirit is connecting, your spirit is connecting because of the altar that's there. In that altar in a dwelling is very important, altar in a dwelling is very important, so that each and every one of us can live a life of prayer, can live a life of worshiping, can live a life of praising God, can live a life of making every other person who comes into your life to get to realize that we are people who are serving the living God, we are people who are serving, who are serving the living God. So I'm looking forward to the weekend, we're going to be having um, awesome sh sessions uh, during this weekend, and so tune in. And let's be blessed. Shalom, shalom. Till next time, God bless you and keep you. Hi, I hope that you liked our slice of today, as long as it's today. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, I welcome you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, A Slice of Today, and also hit the notification bell. I'd also like you to like and follow our Facebook fan page, A Slice of Today. Get to follow us on Twitter, A Slice of Today. Get to follow us on, on Telegram, A Slice of Today. Get to follow us on Instagram, A Slice of underscore of today get to download slice of today application from play store the slice of today get to also join us on wordpress at the slice of the day blog the slice of the day blog and also if you'd like me to uh, to add you to my whatsapp slice of today group get to text me on 0708884323 and i know and i do believe with the various social media handle that you are having you're gonna be blessed by all the content by all the things that we get to share so be blessed as long as it's today we hear from the lord Bye.